On the name of Allah, most gracious, most merciful, this quick lecture will be about the echocardiography rule during mitral clip procedures. Usually, the echocardiography rule during clip procedure will start by taking some basic measurements like vena contracta, pulmonary vein reversal of flow during systole, and most importantly, he has to exclude the presence of a pericardial effusion here. In this patient, we have a severe jet of eccentric MR. The mechanism of this MR was due to tethering of the posterior leaflet with some annular dilatation. That's why we can see by color the eccentric posteriorly directed jet of severe MR. This is a 3D volume taken by 3D zoom mode showing the anatomically oriented view of the mitral valve. This is the aortic valve at 12 o'clock, and this is the anterior mitral leaflet, and this is a posterior mitral leaflet. I'm looking to the mitral valve from the left atrial perspective, and this is the lower part of the interatrial septum. So here is medial, and here is lateral. This is the medial commissure, and this is the lateral commissure. We can also have a full volume with color to be able to see how big is the regurgitant orifice and from where it is coming. Also, we should look to the left atrial appendage by 2D and 3D if we have 3D TEE available to exclude the presence of left atrial thrombi as the wire may accidentally go through the left atrial appendage and cause dislodgement of already pre-existing thrombus. This is the left atrial appendage orifice and this is the comedian ridge and this is unfaced view of the left upper pulmonary vein and this is the lateral commissure of the mitral valve, this is A1 and this is P1. We have to assess the interatrial septum very well before any procedure that is including septal puncture. This is the bicable view, one of the longitudinal views from the mid esophageal level. This is superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, right atrium, crista terminalis, right atrial appendage, and here is the left atrium. There is, this is the short axis base view with the aortic valve in short axis. Here is a tip for you. In all the procedures that we are doing in our center, it is my practice to use this 3D zoomed view from the, for the interatrial septum from the right atrial perspective. Here is the superior vena cava, here is the inferior vena cava, and this is the aortic sinuses of Valsalva, and this is ascending aorta, and here should be the arch. So this is anterior, and this is posterior. This is superior vena cava, and here's the opening of the inferior vena cava. This is the eustachian valve. Here down should be the coronary sinus, and here should be the tricuspid valve. This is the same antero, posterior, or AB view of fluoroscopy. This view can create a common language between you and the interventionist. Here you can see this drop out. I made it intentionally by lowering down the gain to be able to differentiate between the thin membranous part of the interatrial septum and the thick part. Usually we need to puncture at the thin part and avoiding the thick part. This is the catheter coming from the inferior vena cava towards the superior vena cava. And at this point I could show the catheter tip to the interventionist and I told him you need to come more down to this point avoiding going anteriorly to the aortic valve. And actually he came down but he pointed anteriorly. Then I told him to rotate clockwise to face a little bit posteriorly and it was a good position. And then at the moment of tenting of the interatrial septum before the perforation happens, we should stop here and we should measure the height of the puncture. We need about four centimeters from the annular level. Here in this point, the distance were not four centimeters. That's why we chose another point, which was much more better than the previous one. Here the distance was about four centimeters. So this point was suitable for septal puncture. And then the needle will be introduced with the characteristic echo mark sign that we should see inside the left atrium to make sure that the septal puncture happened correctly. And then, after that, the interventionist will introduce the sheath over this needle and then he will withdraw out the needle. The sheath will be inside and sometimes you will be asked to measure the distance or the depth inside the left atrium. 
Here is the 3D live view of the catheter coming through the interatrial septum. And this is the left atrium from above again, anterior mitral leaflet, posterior mitral leaflet, and we can monitor the movement of the sheath and the clip while coming out of the sheath. Here the clip came out and it is lying over the comedine ridge. Here is the left upper pulmonary vein, here is the left atrial appendage. So we showed this to the interventionist and he started to move away from the comedine ridge by pulling out the sheath a little bit and movement medial or lateral like that till he came above the mitral valve. Now back to the 3D to check perpendicularity. This is very important step and this is one of the incremental values of the 3D during mitral clip to check the perpendicularity of the opened mitral clip in relation to the mitral leaflets. And here we can see the clip is oblique in relation to the anterior and posterior mitral leaflet. So we told the interventionist to rotate anticlockwise and this is what he did. He rotated anticlockwise but he was a little bit anterior and then he came back posterior a little bit to more to be more suitable. And then even during movement from lateral to medial you can monitor this very easily by the 3D. After that the interventionist will introduce the opened mitral clip through the mitral valve itself and then by applying color doppler here we should see the clip bisecting the color signal. This is the thing we need to see during this step and then the interventionist can also push and pull the mitral clip, the whole system to see the behavior of the system and mitral clip during diving into the left ventricle. Now the mitral clip is inside the left ventricular cavity while the arms are opened. By color signal, now we can see the view that we like to see, the clip bisecting the color signal. And then it will come to the grasping moment, and this is very important. Everybody will be looking to your screen. Here in this trial of grasping, we could grasp the anterior leaflet, but the posterior leaflet came out of the clip. You can see the grippers coming down, and then the arms coming up anterior leaflet was taken but the posterior leaflet was lost. So we tried another trial. Here grippers are down, then arms are up, anterior leaflet is in, posterior leaflet is in. So this was successful grasping. And then we assessed that. So there was remaining significant mitral rigors. After discussion we decided to put another clip. We saw that the medial orifice is smaller than the lateral orifice and also from the previous view we could know that the rigage is lateral to the clip. So the decision was to put another clip just lateral to the first one. Here the interventionist is introducing the second clip and here is the second clip in trail to position it just lateral to the first one. We could see this very well by 3D. Here's after grasping by the second clip, we could see a just trivial jet of MR. And by continuous wave doubler, we couldn't find any significant gradient through a diastolic gradient through the mitral valve. So this was considered successful. We could overcome this stasis also by optimizing the heparin dose and ACT. After getting satisfactory result, now we will ask the interventionist to release the second clip. Now it is released and he will take the needle out through the sheath. I'm saying needle because the remaining of the system after deployment of the clip is exactly like a needle. So it can easily harm any part of the left atrium. That's why we have to follow this very carefully. And now the remaining of the system will be taken out through the sheath. Here is the final view from the left atrial perspective. We could see double orifice mitral valve. And here is the same view, but from the left ventricular perspective, we could see the tips of the two clips here. And here is the medial orifice, here is the lateral orifice. This is me inside the cath lab. And this is my center, Prince Sultan Cardiac Center Al Hassa in Saudi Arabia. There is me in your echo imaging in Istanbul 2013. Thank you so much.